Hey everyone, uh, I figured I'd cut the uh, <laughs> the 10 minute timer down because I forgot that I could do that whenever I want. Uh, one of the biggest kind of feedback requests I've gotten from viewers is to have some sort of a countdown at the beginning of the show so that um, when the post goes live that the broadcast is starting, you were, you know, I if the, up until this episode, when I would post a live show, I would start the show. I would do my little intro bumper, which is 11 seconds, and then I'd move on. So uh, the feedback I got was, hey, you know, maybe a couple of minutes. So I, I kind of went along with 10 minutes. So I, I might change that to five minutes. Five minutes might be a good, um, yeah, a good thing. Mike, thank you so much for the, the um, kind words regarding the timer. So this is the photo show. This is episode six. Today is Monday, May 9th. Um, and uh, this is the very first uh, Facebook Live show dedicated to photography and videography and the technology around it. And my name is Brian Matias. And uh, you know, if you have any questions, please be sure to leave them in the comments section. Um, just Josh, a heads up. I'm I'm trying a different kind of view, hoping the comments come through more real time here. Uh, seem to be. So we'll see. Uh, feel free to, like I said, leave the comments. Uh, and let me know what you think. So I wanted, I you may have noticed, uh, since I started the show, the first five episodes I went daily, um, not including the weekends. And what I realized last Thursday was, uh, for me, just a one person guy, it's just not sustainable. Um, and the reason for that is because, um, two reasons, one, Producing a show, as I'm quickly learning, takes a lot of effort, and that's not something that I take lightly. Uh, I, whenever I do something, I, I want to try to do as, as best as possible, you know, to have fun with it and to give uh, all of you viewers who are watching live and also watching the recording uh, value. And that segues me to, to my second point, and that is kind of value. So uh, probably the most precious commodity that we have uh, for ourselves is time. Time in the land, because we're not really getting any more land, and we're definitely not getting any more time, at least not until a, uh, a time machine is, is created. So when I create a show, I was getting to that point as quickly as last Thursday, episode six, which is this one, where I was like, man, I feel like I don't have what I want to share ready, and I don't have a team of producers getting me content. Uh, so rather than waste time, I was just going to do a daily-ish show, big air quotes here, daily-ish. Um, and it gives me the opportunity. So I, I'm thinking at the very least two days a week um, and maybe three days a week. But basically when I have something to say, when I have something that I want to share with you uh, and I think I can add value to you, the viewer, then I'm going to go live. I know that that's kind of, that's less... Um, structured than say every day at 6 p.m. But this is all still a work in progress. And if it's, you know, catches and starts getting critical mass, then yeah, maybe I can add more resources and bring it up a level. But for now, just rest assured that I'll try to give as much notice as possible. I know this was kind of short notice because like, I'm like, oh, you know what? I want to try midday. I've been going kind of in the evenings. I want to see what we can do midday. Um, oh, and so yeah, Mike is saying, we tried daily with the Petapixel Photography Podcast and I nearly lost my mind. It's unsustainable for one person. Exactly. Um, and, and a podcast, you have kind of the luxury even of it's you, you create the episode and then you air it whenever you air it. Um, and I was considering that as well. Like maybe I can remove the live component, but the live component for me is like one of the kind of fun things. So that's basically it there. I don't want to take too much time, um, but what we're going to do is... Uh, I have topics that I'm finding, and then also if you guys have topics that you're interested in, uh, you can always go to um, become a member of my Facebook group, which is at EvolveYourEye.com. It's called Evolve Your Eye, and leave questions, and we can cover those. So today, there's one thing that I've been working on, uh, and this is actually, I had this um, as a... Uh, as a blog post that was like, it was in my Evernote as a blog post, right? But I figured this can be cool to kind of cover um, in the uh, in this show. And so 
yeah, it's called Vemadalen. Vemadalen. Um, and it's a term that I found uh, a while back uh, where, <coughs> excuse me, It's by a, a, a website called the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. And what this website does is um, they produce these videos, these really nice videos. I'm going to play the Vemadalen one for you in a minute. Um, and what they do is they, they concoct a word that doesn't exist in the English language for something that we, I think, all universally can relate, relate to. Now, Vemadalen is, um, I think particularly appropriate for this uh, show. Because it shows, uh, obviously the photo show, it's about photography and technology, it's about kind of uh, expanding creativity. Um, it's not, you know, we'll definitely have gear and tech stuff, but for me, I love chatting about uh, the creativity and the individuality of photography. And I know it kind of sounds uh, all woo woo, like, you know, all kind of like, oh, the creativity and the individuality of photography, but it's actually true. Um, it's a huge anchor in my book, again, the visual palette, um, because that's the one variable, the one variable that separates every single photo is the person who took it. So let's go ahead here. I'm going to play this um, video for you, and I'd like for you to, when we get back, I'm going to kind of talk through some of my thoughts around it. So let's check out this video. Um, again, I took this from YouTube off of the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows uh, page, and uh, I'll get back to it afterwards. You are unique. And there are seven billion others just as unique as you. Each of us is different, with some new angle on the world. But what does it mean if the lives we're busy shaping by hand all end up looking the same? easily replaced by a thousand identical others. Vemodalen. So we all spread out, looking for scraps of frontier, trying to capture something special, something personal. as if we're afraid of being captured ourselves. So quickly pegged for exactly what we are. So easily mistaken for someone ordinary, just like everyone else. It should be a comfort that we're not so different, that our perspectives so neatly align, that these same images keep showing up again and again. It's all right if we tell the same jokes we've all heard before. It's all right if we keep remaking the same movies. It's all right if we keep saying the same phrases to each other, as if they had never been said before. The powerful play goes on, and you will contribute a verse. And you and I and seven billion others will leave our mark on this world we've inherited. But if, in the end, we find ourselves with nothing left to say, nothing new to add, idly tracing outlines left by others long ago, it'll be as if we weren't here at all. This, too, has been said many times before. The powerful play goes on, and when you get your cue, you say your line. All right, so pretty cool video, right? Um, one of those things that you probably hadn't in the back of your mind, probably never considered a word for it. So these guys at the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows, which is kind of a, 
depressing name, but I, I love that video. I think it's, it's, it just does a, a great job of um, putting, you know, you have that, that kind of word on the tip of your tongue and it, it kind of helps get you there. So uh, this is a huge, huge, huge thing in my opinion. Uh, this idea that uh, people, f you know, feel like they have no ability just by virtue of the fact that so many photos have been taken and so many photos have been shared. How do you, you know, have your own voice? Uh, and people are, are striving for that in, in terms of their, their ability to express themselves. Because being able to express yourself um, through photography is a very powerful thing. Uh, and um, when we are constant, when we feel like I think that we're constantly judged, our performance is being judged by you know the way we share on social media and uh, the engagement or the lack of engagement that a photo gets. Um, that can that can really stifle sharing. So um, what I'd like to do here is uh, I'm going to just talk about some photos and just kind of explain my rationale or my thought process about this. So, um, and hey, Bri, what's going up, man? I just looked at the comments, Bri, uh, welcome to the show. Let me know what you think of this earlier time. But, so we're talking, again, Vemadalen, and uh, this is the Brooklyn Bridge. And I'm from Brooklyn, so it's an especially kind of uh, sentimental thing. Now I've shot the Brooklyn Bridge a thousand times and I'm sure you've seen a trillion photos of it. But for me, one of the ways that I um, always talk about being able to share um, your individuality, one of the ways is simply by changing up composition. So uh, I always call this upskirt, the Brooklyn Bridge upskirt. And uh, it was under one of the turrets, you know, that you walk through as you cross between Manhattan and Brooklyn. And I just looked straight up and I shot the photo. And I don't know whether anyone's shot this before, it doesn't matter. For me, this was like groundbreaking, this photo, straight up. Um, I, I, it just, I was like, oh man, this is my photo uh, of the Brooklyn Bridge, a photo that I've seen so many times. Um, and so I, I really strongly think that if you want to put your own creative stamp on, you know, your photography, on your vision, then do it through composition. That's definitely one of the ways. Um, it's not easy. And uh, it, the variables there are, you know, time of day and access and all that stuff. But for the most part, composition is one of the kind of the, the I, I'm going to say easiest, but it's one of the most surefire ways that you can help uh, train your eye into creating a kind of individual sense of, of what your style is. And then speaking of bridges, uh, this will segue. So this is the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. I took this when, during my short kind of tenure at, in the Bay Area when I worked for Google. And I've seen more shots of the Golden Gate Bridge, I think, than of the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, and they're all, not all, but a lot of them are stunning and they're taken by really talented photographers. So aside from composition, another, I guess, aspect of my individual style that I uh, have honed over the, next, over the last decade is post-processing, like the stylization. So, uh, you know, for me, I no normally see the Golden Gate Bridge presented in kind of its full regality in color. Beautiful colors, whether it's, you know, Carl the Fog is coming through or it's a beautiful sunrise or sunset, I, I see colors come through. So I thought I'm going to kind of change things up and one, the Golden Gate Bridge is known for its beautiful color, so I'm going to take that out of the equation and focus on tone. So I applied a black and white treatment, you know, a really high contrast black and white treatment. I, I, the, you know, I didn't care if the shadows were being crushed. Um, it was my way of kind of uh, portraying the Golden Gate Bridge. Again, a photo that has been photographed a thousand times. Uh, the other thing, speaking of bridges, just to keep going at it, is, um, and also moving from an urban environment to a natural environment, 
Uh, this is Multnomah Falls. So Multnomah Falls is kind of like the um, Times Square of the Columbia River Gorge here in Oregon. It's the easiest, probably the, the easiest waterfall to access in the entire Columbia River Gorge circuit, and it's by far the most visited, with good reason. It's just such a pretty waterfall. So um, when I speak of composition, if we go kind of to, let's just go back to the Golden Gate Bridge, this is the entire Golden Gate Bridge, right? Um, but the Multnomah Falls shot kind of shares a concept uh, that I have here with the Brooklyn Bridge, where um, it's not only, um, you know, it's not always about capturing everything. Sometimes it's about capturing what isn't there. So this is the Benson Bridge at Multnomah Falls. And what you don't see which you normally see uh, with a photo of these falls is the entire waterfall. The, the cat, it's a several tier waterfall. And right in front of the, uh, the bridge is another tier. Uh, the waterfall starts cascading down. So that's kind of something that you don't see. So when you're thinking about expressing yourself, your individuality, you know, changing things up, sometimes it's not about, sometimes you don't always have to spoon feed the subject to your viewer. Uh, it's very possible that a lot of people will have no idea this is Multnomah Falls based on the photo. They'd have to recognize the Benson Bridge. Uh, and I'm okay with that because the, I know it's Multnomah Falls and I can share that through a post, through a video like this. I could share this a ton of different ways to, to educate the viewer that this is Multnomah Falls without just kind of like slamming it over your head. Like, oh, this is Multnomah Falls, clearly. So. I definitely recommend changing up composition in terms of your focal length and eliminating things that might be obvious. Because again, um, unless you, you really understood the kind of the patterns, uh, the brick pattern of, of the Brooklyn Bridge and kind of, you know, could tell the webbing, the famous webbing that comes out of the turrets, you might not know that this is the Brooklyn Bridge. So the final one kind of thing I want to talk about is um, just having fun, experimenting. That's a way to easily kind of set yourself apart in terms of uh, presenting a photo. So this is Times Square. I mentioned this earlier. Times Square is pandemonium. Uh, just about any hour of any day, especially around weekends, especially around nice weather, and especially around major holidays, Times Square becomes this just saturation of people. And so um, what I did here was, um, you, can, you, you might not know that this is Times Square, uh, just by looking at it, but once I tell you this Times Square, you, you know the, I, the, all those lights in the background, and it just—it's a testament to how electric Times Square is, because all of that—that's just me panning. So I waited for a taxi to come through, and I panned with it, and it's not—you can see—it's clearly not a perfect pan. In fact, I have photos from this shoot that are better. The taxi is, the taxis are sharper, but for some reason, this one I really like it because the blur. I feel uh, accent is accentuated by the actual lights moving, so I kept it that way. And just to take a quick, I see uh, AD here, do what makes you happy. Your art will never mature if you're constantly comparing and altering it because of others. Absolutely. How does that saying go? Don't compare your everyday life to other filtered highlight reels. Yep, absolutely. Uh, which is the trap that many can fall into on social media. Be inspired or be creating, never be comparing. And thank you for the kind words, AD. Um, so I couldn't agree more uh, in terms of uh, what you're saying, uh, AD, in terms of just generally the problem with social media is, um, I would say, and this is, there's no data to this, especially after watching uh, John Oliver last night and how he kind of eviscerated uh, recent studies show. I have no data to, to, to back this up, but I would, I would say in terms of the overall scope of social media, 95% of people on social media are content consumers and 5% are, are content creators. So, and those content creators also are content consumers, but I would say predominantly the people who are on social media are consuming content. And when you consume content um, and you begin um, making that foray into creating content, and I'm not just talking about sharing, 
you know, a photo with your friends. I'm talking about being a content creator. Like I'm trying to be a content creator. I'm creating content for you. It becomes impossible to avoid the comparisons um, and to see what other people are doing, kind of keeping up with the Joneses. Um, and basically qualifying your own worth against what other people are doing. Never really thinking about their, the factors they have and the kind of things that they've done for themselves. Uh, it's just, it, it's one of those practices of futility um, and really can be damaging to your own, you know, productivity if you're judging your performance or what you should be doing based on whether other people will like it. So, um, yeah, Brian's saying there, there are very few 100% original photos to shoot what you love. Keep shooting, everyone's inspired by someone. Actually, Brian, that last part, everyone is inspired by someone. Such a brilliant thing to say. Um, and you're, that's, it, it goes hand in hand with something that I, that I believe in personally. I'll share my photo. Whenever I share my photo, I share it. I share it because I like it, but I share it for you. And there, under that, there's a, a pretty hard truth. I will have people who will love it. I will have people who will be like, okay, yeah, great, another photo by Brian, I like it. And then I'll have people who will hate it. And um, I do it for everyone. I share it for all three types of people. Um, because if I can get an emotion out of you, especially for the people who love it and the people who hate it. The people who pass by, you know, I can't tell, I appreciate the like and that you spent a second looking at it, but it's the people who uh, I really uh, get an emotion out of that I'm excited about and that, that's who, who I'm doing this for. Uh, so, like, I would get a lot of times uh, if I just go here to, back to this photo, um, the original photo had more blue in it and that's how I shared it. Especially, I, I had um, the blue channel and the highlights using a split toning much higher. Um, and at the time when I shared it, that's what I liked. So I shared it as is. Um, and I got so much, you know, positive and negative feedback because it, 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 um, it connected with people in, in a good way and in a bad way. But I, when I went to get that, I knew I wanted to share this photo, and when I got it, um, I actually desaturated the blues because in the this was taken several years ago. In, in the years that I, from when I took it to now, my own kind of sensibilities changed, and so um, I edited the photo. I self-edited, and I'm sharing it that way. So everything is an evolution in photography. Um, again, that kind of sounds like woo-woo, like oh, they're evolving, but it's so true. And I'm living proof of that. I never ever delete photos that I've shared in the past. Even ones that when I look at now, I cringe. I'm like, yikes. Because that's who I am. And it's important for me to share with you my own growth, my own evolution as a photographer, as a creative, as an artist. Um, and so, in a way, it's kind of leading by example. You know, um, I do all these things. And if I cared so much about what people thought, I would go back and delete those photos so it would be kind of as, as much, as, as kind of removed from the internet as anything can be. But I do it for myself. Um, and I just saw really quickly here um, from Dave. Hey Dave, oh not Dave, David, David Foster. I take pictures for fun, never studied up until about a year ago. I shot with a Samsung Galaxy camera and had an image of an alligator featured on the National Geographic webpage on Earth Day. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, as long as you're doing it for yourself, again, uh, let me, parentheses. Um, if you're obviously being paid, you know, uh, companies paying you to do, they're licensing your work or they're commissioning you for a shoot, usually you're kind of at the mercy of the art director there or the marketing person or whoever. You're being paid for those services or a wedding, you know, you have a consultation with your bride and groom. They kind of tell you the kind of stuff that they're looking for and you do your best to, uh, you know, meet those, those needs. But when you're not being paid, when you're doing this for yourself, um, consistency is the most important thing, but not necessarily consistency that every photo looks the same. In fact, that's, um, I would say that's, I would argue that that's a bad, not a bad thing, but 
I would avoid that. What I mean by consistency is consistency that you are true to yourself. You're, when I share a photo, make no mistake, I'm happy with that photo. Uh, I don't take it down and post something else unless there's a, an egregious, I just missed the mother of all dust spots type of thing. Um, but I will never share a photo and someone says, man, those greens are wild or man, this, looks, this doesn't look like a photo anymore. I will never take that down and, and, and kowtow to that ever. And neither should you. After all, um, you're tuning in to see my, to me, my, my flavor, my style. Um, and I tune in to see you, you know, your flavor and your style, what, what it is that makes you tick. Because that's kind of like a, a window into your, your soul as a creative. So um, that's why this video to me is so, um, it means a lot. It really resonated with me. Um, and I, I think it's absolutely brilliant. So um, let me just see here, Kanique. In an interview with Mark Cuban, said social media is troll driven. I like communities uh, that form within, uh, like this one, are passion driven. Absolutely, yeah, I like that. So Mark Cuban said that social media is troll driven. And I mean, I get that. Uh, when it's wonderful when you have the shield of anonymity and the ability to talk smack about something or someone from anywhere in the world, not in, in front of their faces. Um, and so, sure, that's just kind of, it goes with it, which is why I welcome the haters. They don't bother me at all. Um, I appreciate that I'm eliciting an emotion out of them, um, but I'm not doing it. With that said, I don't do anything to flame anyone. I don't, I hate that. I avoid that like the plague. So. All I care about is being able to share my kind of creative vision with you the way I see it. It's not yours. I'm not doing it for you. I'm, I'm doing it for myself and I'm, I'm sharing it with you because um, that's what I've said this before. The, you know, that's kind of the very nature of art. No one that I know of creates art to hoard it to themselves. I don't, that to me does, that, that is a does not compute thing. Um, and again, there was a quote that I, I paraphrased, like the only bad photo is the one that's not shared. And you know, you take that tongue in cheek, but uh, the whole reason why I share is so that, you know, it, it's, that's completes the, the life of the photo for me. So that's kind of the show for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I really, you know, again, I'm gonna be focusing less on making sure that I have a show every single day and more on delivering high impact, high quality content that hopefully will enrich your days. So with that, what I'd like to do is show you, you can follow me here. Um, these are my social channels, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat is definitely one of my favorites lately, uh, Twitter and YouTube, all of those, you know, slash Brian Matias. Um, and uh, I post to all these networks as often as I can, and I'd love to connect with you at all those places. So uh, with that, I wanna thank everyone for joining me today, and I'll see you on uh, the next photo show for episode seven uh, this week. Bye everyone, enjoy your days.